Back when we first tried beating the bloodhound, AWOL Adam had the time of his life. I just want to say, if this looks like fun, it's twice as much fun as it looks like. He ran crisscross. He waded through water. Then he wasted a whole peck of pepper. None of it worked. But this time, the old boys have some new tricks. I think the plan here is pretty simple. We get the same trainer and the same dog. That would be Matt and Morgan. Exactly. Run them through a whole set of new tests. See how they do. <laughs> Those new challenges, fresh from the fan site, are the red herring, the no sense suit, the deep water run, and the lineup. And there's also been some recasting. This time, however, Jamie's the escaped convict, and I'm the sheriff. That's right. And Morgan is still Morgan, little suspecting what waits up the track in test number one. Well, Jamie, in light of your friendship with the governor, Morgan, Matt, and I are going to give you a five-minute head start. Go! Just like last time, the convict gets five minutes grace, hopefully leaving nothing behind but his own manly scent. If he's caught, the dog gets a reward. I've also promised Morgan that on the last chase, if he catches Jamie, he can eat him too. Okay. <laughs> Speaking of lunch, this first trial, suggested by one of the fans, is called the Red Herring. This looks like as good a place as any. And if that needs explaining, here's Jamie with fish. Unfortunately, this isn't smell-o-vision. But let me tell you, this is really stinky stuff. It's a persistent smell. And the idea is that once the smell gets in the dog's nose, he's not going to smell anything else. Red herring. All right, everyone, listen up. You are looking for Mr. James Franklin Heideman. He is considered extremely dangerous. You are not to approach Mr. Heineman. You are not to offer lunch to Mr. Heineman. If Mr. Heineman speaks to you, you do not speak back. If you approach Mr. Heineman in your car, keep your hands and feet inside the vehicle at all times. Mr. Heineman is extremely dangerous. What I want now is a hard target search of every star, cluster, dust buster, and myth buster out there until you find him. Is that clear? Well, it's crystal to me, but I can't vouch for the dog. All right, Jamie, time's up. Here we come. And with barely a whiff of Jamie's old undies, known in the trade as a scent article, Morgan's off down the trail with two humans in tow. Jamie seems to have run a serpentine across this path. I can just see him giggling to himself. <laughs> serpentine. Up ahead, Jamie shows he can weave, warp, and weft. Do a little bit of double back. Although I don't think that's gonna fool him. But the herrings just might. Morgan doesn't just stop for a sniff. Leave it, get to try staying for dinner. Leave it, get to her. Leave it, get to her. Let's go, come on, come on. Now in your classic detective story, the detail that has nothing to do with finding the murderer that throws the detective off the trail is referred to as the red herring. Now our convict, Mr. Heineman, seems to be quite the reader for, in an attempt to throw us off his trail, he has left us an actual pile of red herring. Double back Jamie holes up in a thicket, close enough to the action for him to smell Morgan. Uh, so we'll see whether the fish actually makes a difference now, because he's been following the road quite well. <laughs> but it seems Morgan's come slightly adrift. The trail's clearly gone cold and he's already past the spot where Jamie turned back. So that tells me that a lot of it may have gotten into his nose and stayed there, which means it may be doing its job. They're long gone, they're down the trail. In fact, they've come to the end of the trail. The only choice left is to backtrack and pick up the scent where they lost it. There's scent back there. Who knew my body again? We know Jamie was right here. This is where he dumped a bunch of red herring. That just smells really... Delicious, we're trying to pick up his scent where he went from here. This is probably Morgan's one shot at picking up the trail. As the scent wafts away in the breeze, so do his chances of finding the fugitive. All right, let's go, where is he? But persistence and perception pay off as he hunts down the Heineman. Hello, Who's that? Morgan. Who's that? <laughs> Who's that? Ah, so good. Oh, 
where'd he go? Hello, yes, Morgan. Hello, boy. boy. <laughs> You're caught. <laughs> it took you a while. It did take us a while. <laughs> Come here, go boys. The red herring scent pool definitely threw Morgan for a loop. We, we had to come on back and start from that part again. And I actually selected this place because at the time, the wind was going this way, yeah. away from the trail and everything. And I watched you guys go right past us. So the red herrings worked, but not well enough to beat Morgan. It didn't distract him because he wanted to eat it, which may well be the origin of this myth. I mean, it pulled him away from doing his okay, job, leave, but the fact leave. is that he got right back on the trail, and on, the bottom line, Red Herring didn't beat the Bloodhound. The fierce odor of fish was no match for the dog. Now it's time to get devious. Next up is the no scent suit. Now this is quite a process that involves a lot more than just a suit. We've got a lot of products that use enzymes to break down smells, like a body wash, we've got deodorant, we've got wipes, we've got sprays for the outside. The idea is to not leave anything that comes off your body for the dog to smell. So, excuse me, I gotta take a shower. So in a few short minutes, Jamie should be less smelly than ever before in his whole stinking life. I'm very, very clean. He's been washed, rinsed, and sprayed. Now it's time to get detailed. Short of having a hot wax, Jamie's done all he can excellent to arrest his aroma. You guys ready for a workout? <laughs> what are you wearing? <laughs> My jammies. I'm totally speechless. Are you ready? I'm ready if you are. Three, two, one, get the hell out of here. <laughs> Once again, the head start is five minutes. Jamie sticks to the path for a while, hoping the no scent suit lives up to its name. This whole concept of eliminating any trace of human smell is very familiar to hunters and trappers. Most animals can smell us a mile off, so it really pays to disguise or neutralize your scent the best way you can. Now, a hunter does that to sneak up on his prey, but I'm using the same technique to avoid getting nailed by this dog. Back down the track, the hound is let loose as Jamie goes off-road. OK, where to go? They're coming to get me. <laughs> OK, this is it. I think you've got a scent. We're on him. But that might just be wishful thinking. Jamie, meantime, is snug and smug. And you know what? If they come up wind, the wind's going this way. Everything that's behind me is thicket, so <laughs> they're going to have to pay for it. <laughs> then again, sometimes it just doesn't matter which way the wind blows, or seemingly what you're wearing. Despite his diligence, it seems Jamie is dressed for disaster. Hello, Morgan. <laughs> oh, you found me. Good boy. You are caught again. I guess a no scent suit and no work. No work. You put out plenty of a scent. We followed it strong the whole way. Nice try. <laughs> so the nose of the bloodhound is more than a match for a suit and a spray and a shower. And Jamie's the first to admit it. Well, it might look fancy and it might work for deer, but uh, this no scent suit, no match for the bloodhound.